Aniraj, I would like to start with you here. How can technology bridge the gap between the health equity, I mean, you know, in different across India, and from the use of drones, we've been seeing how they are being used in rural India to actually detecting cancer in a village. Thank you, Ambika. Uh, it's really nice to see you in person, Mr. Bachchan. It's, uh, Zoom is not the same, I must say. So thank you. Um, I think, you know, uh, Ambika, you started off with the challenge. The challenge yes. of a large country with a lot of people geographically dispersed. And uh, the equity issue becomes larger because of the urban-rural divide. Um, so there is actually, if you look at the shortage of uh, manpower that we have, the only way to actually leapfrog that is possibly by using technology to get there. Um, you know, there are three large issues. One is about awareness of health, and thanks to COVID, I think we've all become very aware of our health right up to our villages. The second is access. And access, with the help of telehealth, with the help of really uh, technology, we need to provide access to our rural population. Uh, we also, the third big piece is going to be about uh, ensuring that they get the right kind of quality of services right at their doorstep. And to do all of that, there is no way that our manpower, our human resources, are going to get there very soon. So the only way for us to do that is through technology. And I just want to use one simple example, eSanjeevani, which is a telehealth platform, uh, which is supported by the government of India, is currently, uh, they've got a one lakh health and wellness centers which are using it. There are 12,000 hubs, and they've run about 65 million telehealth consultations in our rural areas. So those are the kind of examples that we need to have to really reach out and create access uh, for our So telehealth, health. just going back to the drones, because that's something new we've, we've seen, I mean, in a place like Arunachal Pradesh, how they're really using drones so that healthcare can reach last mile connectivity. Yeah, so uh, that's an inter of course uh, drones is a you know it's also something which is very interesting. We we are, we are seeing that across the world, but in Arunachal, uh, which is a hard to reach kind of a, a geography, it's been very very useful for reaching uh, the last mile, which you know you have to walk for three days to get somewhere, but a drone is able to do that. So we've been running a pilot program. This is supported by USAID and also uh, under the Samrid program. And uh, really looking at how we can deliver medicines, vaccines, uh, blood re as required. And that could possibly be the future in order to reach our populations, which are hard to reach uh, across the country. I was just wanting to know how drones are being used uh, in the kind of campaign that we've been de trying to design here. Sir, uh, so uh, there are a lot of places in India which you have to cross rivers, mountains, et cetera, to get there. So especially our immunization program uh, cannot be complete unless we reach the last mile. And to reach those places, if you go, there aren't roads, et cetera. So uh, to get there itself takes a few days uh, to in most places. So uh, drones are being used to actually deliver vaccines to those locations. Uh, they've got, of course, the ASHA workers, the AM workers in those locations. They're receiving them and they're actually using them. Blood transportation is another big one, especially in emergency care. So that, again, so at the moment, still in trial phases, but uh, this could be a game changer for India, sir, especially in hard to reach areas. Is there any concept of making large enough drones to be able to carry larger packets? At the moment, they're still small packages. The vaccine uh, packages, uh, it's like yeah. a small uh, little container. Uh, blood, again, in emergency, you know, a small container is able to do it. Large drones are also issues of, um, you know, the, the whole security and safety issues. So, uh, the, uh, it, so that's why uh, currently the trials that are happening are mostly on the small drones. But eventually, I'm hoping that uh, you know we'll be able to build, create that security infrastructure to be able to move larger uh, equipment, etc., going forward. If there is a primary medical facility, right, sir, in say a rural area, where some very basic equipment and medical help is there, and if someone wants to have <clears throat> say, a blood test to be able to detect the, you know, the disease. How long does it take? So the problem is blood samples have to reach a lab. And that's another power. So that's why I was asking. Right, sir. Can there be made provision where the person is able to extract the blood, but be able to send it via drone Absolutely. to a laboratory, get it tested, and send the result back? Absolutely. And the government is setting up a lot of labs in every block. 
So actually, the transportation is not just one way, it's both ways. Yeah. So you could get samples, even for tuberculosis, uh, you know, uh, getting samples uh, to the lab to be able to test, yeah. that will be both ways you'll have traffic. Yeah. I say this because a lot of drones are being made here in India now, yeah. uh, in, in companies in Hyderabad, where they're able to test a particular kind of water which is going to be suitable for agriculture. Wow. So the same methodology, yeah, if it can exactly, be used in the medical yeah. field, would be very yeah, helpful. I suppose delivering medicines yeah. and yeah.